Hey guys, before we start this review, I want to give a big shout out to my buddy John. Now John reached out to me on Instagram and uh, said, uh, would, would I like to try some different oils and solvents uh, that he's got some samples of? And I said, sure, why not? And uh, so he sent that along to me. John, I really appreciate that, brother. In fact, I'm already using the Rand CLP and the Rand Bore and Bolt uh, Cleaner right here for the FN509, which we're going to be talking about here in a moment. Uh, but, uh, but really appreciate it. I will definitely be doing a review on some of this stuff and uh, give my thoughts as best I can. Now, guys, don't ever feel like you need to send me anything, but it's incredibly nice. Now, for some reason, you really want to. That's very cool as well. I don't have a P.O. box right now, but I'm looking into it, and I'll update you if I ever get one. Uh, but in the meantime, just contact me on Instagram at ksgunguy underscore official or on Facebook at ksgunguy, and we'll work something out. So once again, John, really appreciate it, brother. My thoughts will be forthcoming. Once again, what is up, guys? KS Gun Guy here. Appreciate you joining me. So I'm excited today to revisit the FN 509. Now, a little over a year ago, I uh, reviewed the original 509 back when it was new to the market, and I had a lot of fun with the gun. I thought it was a good gun. Now, as I went back and looked at the original video and, and kind of thought about some of the things that I said and, and my observations, a lot of them actually remain true, uh, with the exception of one thing. I felt that the FN 509 was a good gun but it didn't necessarily wow me. Now it takes a lot for a gun really really to wow me, especially to stay in the collection full time. Um, and, and so when they announced that the 509 Tactical was out, I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to go back and revisit the 509 and see what kind of enhancements they've thrown at this thing. And I gotta tell you guys, they've thrown a lot at this. So let's go ahead and dive deep and see what we think. All right, so let's go ahead and knock some specs of this guy out of the way. The overall length is 7.9 inches. The height is 5.75 inches. The barrel length is 4.5 inches. Now, if you're curious, um, if you have cans or anything like that and you're curious about the uh, the thread, it's a 1 half by 28. That's actually a really important number for me. You guys know I've got an Omega 45K and uh, I've got the adapter that fits the 1 half by 28 and all my guns in the house that are 9 millimeter at least have that thread pitch. So um, it's nice to be able to have that consistency there. So again, if you're curious, now the width on this, and I'll give you a good look at that, it is 1.35 inches. The weight unloaded is 27.9 ounces. Now that's with the empty 17 round magazine. And speaking of magazines, we do have again the 17 round magazine, great construction. I like the magazines quite a bit. It's got the matching uh, base plate on it. That's kind of that sand, desert sand sort of uh, color. However, one of the really cool things about the 509, it came with two other magazines and these are not just your average ordinary magazine. These are actually 24 round magazines right here. Now, isn't this a rig? <laughs> I gotta say. Now, you guys know I shoot 10 rounds at a time uh, for these videos, and it's only for these videos. Off camera, I definitely load the magazines up. So, um, so it's fun to have this. The extra capacity is a lot of fun. However, I have to say, uh, practical application. I mean, you, if, you're, if you're after capacity, I mean, this definitely is right up your alley. For me, I wouldn't mind it being just a little bit less, maybe a 20 round or something like that, um, and then maybe a 24 round so you have a little bit more flexibility. But the fact is you get a 17 and two 24 round magazines and when we're talking about value that is absolutely fantastic so again if you're curious about that i think for the most part i will probably stick with the 17 round at least for the video because the other magazines just take up so much room but again if you're curious now the slide finish on the 509 tactical i know it's steel but i'm not sure the exact finish on that i, I i've had a couple people tell me that it might be a pvd or a tinnifer finish something like that so if you guys know be sure to leave a comment down below but i have to say it's a matte finish it's almost a copper right there and i absolutely love it look at that there's no glare whatsoever i mean i think it's extremely attractive and of course we'll talk a little bit more about the slide features here in just a little bit but just in terms of its finish uh, and uh, and quality of finish I think it's uh, I think it's just fantastic. So uh, the frame material, of course, is polymer, as you would expect, and it is a striker fire, just like the original 509. And then in terms of safety, it does carry forward that uh, that hinged design, just like this. And uh, I, you know, I'm I'm not necessarily a fan of these, but uh, but it certainly does the job. And of course, more thoughts on the trigger here in just a little while. 
As for features, guys, I gotta say, there is a lot going on with the 509 Tactical. So we'll start on the grip as we always do. And in terms of the uh, grip texture, again, it's the same as the original 509. And I remarked on the original one that the grip texture is great. I think it's really good. It's got two uh, uh, back plates on here. So there's a little bit of modularity there. I've got the larger of the two. The other one is a little bit more flat, but it has the same texture on it, which is great. And then your front strap right here, really good texture. That camera kind of struggles to uh, focus on it because it matches the table, of course. Uh, but again, this grip texture is great. And then uh, right on the top of your grip, you've got a little bit, a slightly different texture. And I think this is fantastic. I mean, it really, it, it allows you to be able to really get a reference right here for your thumb, but it's not going to beat you up at all, which uh, which I like quite a bit. So uh, love the ergos on this. I love the grip texture. I think it's great. It's got just a little bit of a cutaway for your magazine. So if you need to strip it, if you've got a malfunction or anything like that, you can do it. And a lot of guys like to see this. This thing really chucks the magazines out, not a problem at all. And I'm holding it almost vertical, so, or horizontal? Horizontal, I'd say. And uh, and it's really chucking them out. So uh, it's doing a great job with that. Now, when I went back and I watched the original video about this, uh, one thing that I remarked, uh, the magazine release was pretty stiff. So I'll give you a good look at the magazine release. And they've made some changes on this. It is ambidextrous, of course. First, it's actually a little bit bigger. Um, so it sticks out just a little bit more from the gun. But then also, it's incredibly easy to uh, to actuate. Now, it's stiff enough to where you're not just going to uh, set it off at any time. But uh, but both sides, very easy. So uh, FN did a great job of, uh, of figuring out how to make this a little bit more user-friendly so you can get faster mag changes if that's really meaningful to you. Now, with your uh, slide lock slide release, another change and I'm gonna bring this up to you hopefully you can see that okay those uh, those lines right there um, this went with more of a I guess a Vickers style uh, slide lock slide release um, I've got this on a couple of Glocks I've had in the past and basically it sticks out just a little bit more you're not gonna be able to see it very well I'll try and capture it as best I can both sides but again it makes it super easy to uh, to make that slide go home I don't like doing this very much but I'll do it for you guys just once. And uh, and it works extremely well. You can get a good grip on it. I like it quite a bit. So, so again, as far as uh, function with this gun, with the controls, I absolutely love it. Now we'll take down the gun here in just a little while, but it does have a standard takedown lever. You'd have to hold your slide open uh, as you would expect, and you do have to pull the trigger. So again, we'll come back to that here in just a little while. Now there is a little bit of an undercut under the trigger guard. It's not much, but with a full size duty gun, you don't need it quite as much, I don't think at least, as you do some of the smaller guns, maybe a subcompact or something like that. And then you do have a little bit of, well, it's not really a beaver tail so much, but they've cut it up quite a bit right here. So man, I'll tell you what, you can really get your hand right up on this thing. Um, you can ride it uh, pretty darn high, and that keeps that uh, that bore down a little bit. We always talk about bore axis. Um, so I like the cuts on this, once again, leading uh, towards really very good ergos. And then it does have an accessory rail for lights, chainsaws, lasers, all that kind of good stuff, as you would expect. And it's a really good size uh, uh, rail, so you could really hang all of your toys off of this. All right, let's take a look at the slide here for a moment or two. We've already talked about the finish on it, but it does have front and back serrations. And I have to say the serrations on this are fantastic. They've got a lot of bite, part of which because of that matte finish, but also because they've really been burrowed out very nicely. Um, I like them, they're not too shallow. And that's a problem with some, some guns in my opinion. And then it's got the, uh, the regular 509 uh, slide uh, milling, I guess you would say. And I like it. It's very tasteful. I mean, I think it looks really good. Uh, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. Now, there are a couple things that will probably grab your attention if they have not already. Now, one of which is you'll notice there are a couple of screws right here. This is actually cut for a red dot or an RMR of various sorts. And the gun actually comes with quite a few different plates on it, which is really nice. So uh, you can mount your uh, your different red dot that you choose. And from what I understand, and guys, I haven't put my, uh, my uh, Vortex Venom on this just yet. So um, I haven't gone quite there. Um, I'll do some follow-ups with that at some point in time. Uh, but I understand that it's a little bit more low profile than some of the other guns out there that are cut for a uh, red dot. So uh, I'm looking forward to trying that out and giving it a whirl. But along with this plate right here, they've included these little slants or slopes. So I'll give you that uh, that look again. It's, it's kind of an odd sight picture. In fact, um, I was kind of curious to know how this would perform at the range, especially because my eyes really aren't used to this picture. However, 
I didn't notice those wings at all when I was shooting. It didn't bother me one bit, which is great. And it's kind of cool, and it's going to be hard to see this even with this camera right here, but uh, there are some little notches on both sides of these wings. And the idea behind this is if you've got this plate on here, you can do uh, one-handed manipulations or manipulations of various sorts. And they, um, you know, if you bang it against a table or something like that to rack the slide, it'll catch these little serrations right here. And first it'll protect your slide, but it'll also grip whatever surface it is and you'll be able to rack the slide. So I think that's actually <laughs> kind of an ingenious idea. Um, I, some people might poo paw it a little bit, but, uh, but I think it's actually Actually, kind of cool. So um, haven't really uh, uh, beat it up against a table just yet, but I might give that a whirl a couple of times. Now, in terms of sights, of course, these are raised sights, so you can throw a can on it as you would expect. I want to try and get this in camera as best I can. These are tritium sights, so they are night sights out of the box. And one of the cool things about this, and the camera is not playing very nicely with me, but this actually is basically an HD sight, and it's a pretty thin post. So I really like the sight picture on this. I think they've I think they've really done a good job. They've given it really good quality sights. It was a lot of fun to shoot at the range uh, with the sight picture that it's got, and my eyes were able to pick up the target and the sights very easily. And then I'll give you a good look at the back sights, of course. There's a little bit of serration right there to a help with glare and then uh, the rest of the sites are cut in just a little bit and of course a couple of tritium vials there as well so really good quality sites on this so in terms of the uh, slide features man i think they've really thrown the uh, kitchen sink at this and again i'll do some follow-ups with the red dot and, and give my thoughts on that on that at a later time but i wanted to focus more just on the gun on its own merits for the time being and again so far i've been very impressed all right, let's go ahead and take this guy down here real quick. Once again, like I said, you do need to lock it open. And since it does have a threaded barrel, the next thing you need to do is actually remove the thread protector. And there's one more feature on this that I definitely don't want to forget to mention. Within your thread protector right here, and you're not going to be able to see it very well. I don't even know if I'll be able to capture it in camera at all. You might be able to see it a little bit. There's actually an O-ring in there. And uh, what this does is it actually helps keep the thread protector on the gun, even when you're shooting it. With a lot of other uh, barrels like this, you have to take the thread protector off and uh, leave it off because otherwise it's going to walk off eventually uh, as you're shooting. So I think that's kind of a really cool feature. Now, you guys might notice uh, in the shooting videos uh, in the B-roll, for this video. Um, I actually just out of habit took it off. So that was my mistake. I definitely want to test it with the O-ring on, but, uh, but it was just, again, uh, that's, that's how I'm used to treating other guns. So uh, more on that uh, at a later time, of course. But now that we have the gun locked open, all you need to do is flip your uh, takedown lever right there down to the low position and then release your slide pull the trigger and everything comes apart as you would expect. And it's all the usual parts, uh, no big secrets at all. We've got uh, we've got our barrel, we've got our guide rod and uh, spring assembly, slide and the frame. So uh, what's going on here? I mean, everything is just as you would expect. I mean, I, you know, with most guns anymore, and, and I, I say this so often that it's starting to, uh, to occur to me that the maintenance on these guns has gotten better and better over the years. So you can really get to basically all of your components it's easy to to clean and that sort of thing. Again, I've got that RAND CLP from my buddy John uh, in there. It's doing its job. Did the uh, the solvent on the barrel? Man, it did a great job on that, by the way. And uh, just to kind of show you how it did, this this thing's a little bit over oiled probably right now, but just to give you an idea, look at that feed wrap. It looks absolutely fantastic. And I put about 250 rounds, 50 of those were suppressed. So it definitely was a dirty birdie by the time I was done shooting. Now, in terms of the spring and guide rod, it is all steel. So I mean, it's really very solid for sure. So just to give you a little bit of a look at that. Now, another thing, the gun actually came with two spring and guide rod assemblies. So uh, the the second assembly, I, from what I understand, and again, I was able to run everything with the one uh, right here in front of us, but uh, but if you've got, I guess, some extremely low powered uh, ammunition, you can switch your uh, spring and guide rod, uh, so it'll be able to cycle that a little bit better. But again, I stuck to this, didn't have to change it, even though I did take it with me to the range. 
And then, of course, we've got our frame right here, everything you would expect. Again, really no surprises, no big deal. Very good good construction. Everything cleaned up really nicely, again, even with the can and it getting just basically filthy. It didn't take very long to clean up. You guys know, again, a little extra oil there. Um, that's just kind of how I roll, at least in the very beginning. But that's basically it as far as our components. So to throw this thing back together, we need to get our slide and our barrel, throw that in there. And then we've got our spring and our guide rod. And we'll take our frame and throw this back on. We're gonna lock it open, of course. And then we will take our lever and we are good to go. I will throw that thread protector back on here in a moment. When I took the 509 Tactical to the range, one thing I was thinking about was my original shooting experience with the first 509. And I remember the 509, although it was a fantastic shooter, it took quite a while for me to dial it in. Um, I had a lot of errant shots, um, a lot of very consistent, actually high right shots, which is very unusual for me. Usually if I'm missing consistently, it's low left. But uh, but for whatever reason, the, the original 509, Part of it might have been the sights because the uh, sights on the original 509, I was not quite as impressed with. They stood a little taller than what I was expecting. Now that's ironic to say because the 509 Tactical has the suppressor height sights, but uh, but, I, but I knew that going into this. Um, and I've spent a little bit more time with high sights over the past, let's say six months or so. So I'm a little bit more used to it now. It's not as big of a deal. So I was able to make it work. And I have to say, um, I spent 20 rounds kind of slow firing. I'm not really showing those, but that's I never show the original, the, the very first shots on my videos because that's how I warm up and just get used to the trigger itself. But once I figured out the trigger um, and how I was connecting with it, after 20 shots, uh, I put the next target on and I got to I got to going. Um, and it, it performed very well. Now you guys know I'm not the most accurate shooter on the planet and I shoot a little bit fast. That's just how I tend to do it for these videos because I think it's boring to see a shot and wait five seconds and see another shot. That's just not my thing. Uh, so I tend to shoot a little bit faster and this gun performed extremely well. I was so impressed. I had enough footage after probably I don't know, 100 rounds or so at that point in time, 120 rounds, I think. And then the rest of the time, I was just having a good time. I even had a little time to throw the can on it, as I mentioned before. So hopefully I'm wheeling in some of that footage as well. If not, it's appearing somewhere in this video. Uh, but, uh, but, but it performed just exactly the way I wanted it to. And uh, I was so excited to, uh, to, to shoot this and, uh, and to see how it performed. And, and, you know, I've said this before, guys, anytime you walk away from the range and you feel good after a shooting session, uh, uh, you just you you feel good and and it's a it's great it's a great reflection of the gun and how you connect with it that and that sort of thing and and uh, so I felt that way with this gun and I lend a lot of that or owe a lot of that to the ergonomics of the gun the uh, the grip texture of course which I talked about before but the gun just sits really nicely in the hand now ironically one thing that uh, I noticed and then I had four other guys at uh, Centerfire Shooting Sports shoot this as well the same night. They all were marked on the same thing, and it was the same thing with the original 509. The uh, the release, uh, the slide release or takedown lever gets really hot. Um, and I know guns get hot when you shoot, and that's nothing new. It's not a profound statement. But some get hotter than others, and the 509 definitely gets pretty hot. So just something to be aware of. It's no big deal. Uh, we all kept shooting. It was fine. It's just uh, we, <laughs> we definitely noticed it. So again, something to consider. But let's go ahead and take a look at the trigger of this guy, uh, because there there's a little bit going on with this trigger. Now, like I said before, this is a hinge trigger, as you would expect. I do need to cock that, of course. We've got our hinge trigger, and uh, I, I have to say, just like the original 509, there's some grit in there. Um, there is just a little bit. It is not as clean as I would like it to be. Now, once you get past that and some, uh, some speed bumps there, you get to a nice defined wall, and then our brake is right there. It's coming in about five and a half pounds, almost exactly five and a half pounds. So uh, it's a very consistent trigger. And then when we get to our reset, our reset is right there. It's audible, it's tactile, and uh, then you get back out to your start. Of course, I'll do this a couple more times, but uh, but I, just overall, I think it's a good trigger. It's certainly a duty-oriented trigger, I would say. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say, but, uh, but I feel that to be true anyways. So again, we've got our take up, a little gritty. And then we've got our wall. There's our brake. It is a clean brake, I will say. And the trigger does not go all the way to the back of the trigger housing, which I love. I, I much prefer that. 
and then our reset audible and tactile and then it's out to the start so overall I, you know i think it's a decent trigger it's not the best in uh, in show by any stretch of the imagination but it definitely does the job and the nice thing is i've noticed it already is cleaning up just a little bit even after 250 rounds so i'm excited to go back and put a lot more rounds through this and throw the red dot on uh, put the can back on it again and really wear it in a little bit more and i'm hoping at some point in time there's an aftermarket trigger i'm uh, I, i'm hinting at a company but uh, i won't mention that just yet but anyways again uh trigger it's fine out of the box it's not the best by any stretch but uh, but it will definitely serve and uh, it will get the job done so what do i think of the fn 509 tactical overall Guys, I think it's a great gun. Um, FN has really thrown the kitchen sink at this. Uh, they've put on the uh, the optics ready, the threaded barrel, the upgraded sights. Um, the, it's a really good looking gun too. They've got the uh, the three magazines with the 24 round magazines, a little bigger than I prefer, but uh, but they definitely will work. But again, uh, it's I think it's an absolutely fantastic gun. Now, one thing I haven't talked about yet is price, and a lot of you have probably already been putting in comments down below, perhaps even <laughs> leaving the video saying it's just too expensive. I agree with you. It's an expensive gun. Um, I paid just a little over $900 out the door for this uh, at uh, Frontier Justice in Kansas City, Kansas. Thanks, Frontier, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, but, uh, but so it was an expensive gun. There's no doubt about that. However, when I think about all the things you get with a gun versus the money you pay, I, there's some considerations there. All of the different features that I've talked about in this video add up to what you are paying for. And, uh, and coming out of the store spending $900, if I'm getting all of this, now it'd be cool if there was an optic included, but even still, there's a lot going on for the money. So I really didn't mind paying the money for it. I really didn't because I knew it was feature rich and I was excited to get back into it. And I'm glad I did because it's a fun shooter. It's a good quality gun. The thing is built like a tank. It's, it's certainly duty or oriented and uh, I'm excited that FN did this and I'm looking forward to uh, some other videos. I've already got some if I could only have ones in mind for this. You guys can probably think of at least one. So I'm looking forward to that. And of course, as always, I'm looking forward to your comments down below. Be sure to share your comments. What do you guys think of the FN 509 uh, Tactical? Do you have any experience with either the Tactical or the regular? And uh, what has been your experience up to this point? I'm always looking forward to that. Otherwise, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and I will see you next time.